this is what I think of this order, and spit on it. Fisher easily defeated Spassky, but in the process, his image as a chess god was tarnished. It was a bit like watching two old boxers get back into the ring. There were moments of brilliance, moments of genius, but in fact the chess wasn't up to the standard it had been 20 years earlier. And in some ways, it sullied Fisher's reputation in the way that a bad sequel can sully the original movie. Worse still, by accepting his winner's check, Fisher became a fugitive. Reports placed him in Budapest, Sarajevo, Tokyo, and even Reykjavik. Eventually, Fischer wound up at the family home of Hungarian Grandmaster Susan Polgar. When Bobby stayed with us, uh, of course, we mostly played chess. Of course, as we know, there are a couple of subjects that uh, better avoid with him, talking about Jews, anti-Semitism. The anti-Semitism was just the tip of Bobby's rapidly escalating reactionary mindset. At the end of 2001, Fisher resurfaced on the radio in Manila as a part-time disc jockey, spinning R&B records and spewing an absurd brand of anti-American vitriol. His anti-communism somehow transmuted into an anti-Americanism. On September 11th, while the towers were in flames in real time, Bobby was watching this unfold, this horrific scenario. What goes around, comes around, even for the United States. I want to see the U.S. wiped out. <laughs> for the American chess community that had tolerated the volatile genius for nearly 50 years, Fisher's comments about September the 11th were the last straw. It's not against the law to make bad statements, but, but it's against all morals, and it hurts, it hurts terribly. A person can be strange and be eccentric, but this is vile. I have no affection for him anymore. I just feel sorry for him. If he's 61 years old, he's got nothing. It's sad. In the summer of 2004, the U.S. government finally decided to rein in their former chess king. They revoked his passport, and in August, Bobby Fischer was arrested as he tried to board a plane in Tokyo. One question is, why now? I mean, we sort of knew where he was. We sort of knew that he'd been in Tokyo. Why did the U.S. authorities not track him down earlier? Whatever the motivation, the man who was once the darling of the U.S. government was detained in a power struggle that could top even his most famous matches. Bobby Fischer, like anyone else, should be held accountable for his actions. It's a lose-lose situation for the U.S. because he is a Cold War hero. When he beat, when he beat Spassky, it's a long time ago, but it was, it was great for not only for U.S. chess, but for all of America. The best thing the U.S. government can do, in my opinion, is let that sleeping dog lie and not pursue it. The uh, Justice Department is involved and the State Department is involved. And I, 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 I thought to myself, what an unfair match. They don't have a chance. No matter what the outcome of his present legal turmoil, the final chapter of the Bobby Fischer story will no doubt be an unhappy one. He had the potential to help the chess community a great deal. What could have been could have been fantastic. He changed chess through his genius. But does that excuse the rest? A mother who faked her daughter's cancer. Astonishing, but true. That's at nine. Next, though, one way for fatties to shed pounds and entrepreneurs to rake in dollars, we delve into the history of Weight Watching.